my name is Irene Bedard. I love this cute little microphone. Hey guys, uh, Sam J. Jones, a.k.a. Flash Gordon. Hey everyone, Michelle Hurd here. This is huge Todd Stashwick here at the Missouri Comic Con. I'm Gates McFadden and I'm here waiting for you. It's the Missouri Comic Con with me, Scott Innes. This is Tom and Lizzie, collecting all the things, searching from here to there, finding Comic book tables, house Legos, and action figs, retro gaming, amiibos, and image prints. Watch as they collect them all. Tom Lizzie collecting right now. What's up, nerdlings? Up, nerdlings? This is our pickup video from the Missouri Comic Con. If you just want to see that floor tour and everything, go click on that video. Link in the description below. Right now, we want to talk about some of the stuff that we found there. You know, we actually didn't find a whole lot. It's getting kind of weird. I feel like we're coming home from these conventions and events with less and less yeah, stuff. I've noticed I'm, that. I'm seeing a lot of anime takeover. Yeah, and, and I'm not. I'm not the biggest anime fan. I'm sorry. I don't mind that there's a lot of anime stuff there. I think that's really cool because in all honesty, yeah. when I was growing up, there was like no anime to be found anywhere. <laughs> but it just means that, you know, there's kind of less and less. First of all, we've had discussions before about like comic cons not having an abundance of or comics. Comic. <laughs> yeah. So that's always kind of weird. Yeah. And in our area, speaking for the farming Midwest, there's generally not a huge video game presence, yeah. which, you know, I mean, would kind of be my <laughs> my thing. Uh, sometimes we're lucky enough, if you did watch the floor tour video, you saw some footage, but there was not much. Like two booths and yeah. what was there was very slim. Yeah, we're not finding a whole lot, but hey, at least we it's still have a, a lot little of fun. nicer on the wallet. Uh, yeah. See, you're talking having fun, I'm talking about saving money. I mean, yes, it is nice to save money, because, you know, that's always nice, but... I mean, even though the convention merchandise is being geared towards others nowadays, we still have a lot of fun. We get, get to hang out with our con friends and, you know, see awesome cosplays and, you know, sometimes talk to fun celebrities. Hey everybody, Scott Innes, you know, Scooby-Doo, where are you? Scooby-Dooby-Doo and scrappy deppy doo too. They helped us out. We worked out a little deal to get some media badges and we put those to good use to really showcase the event again in that video so please check it out <laughs> because there's so much to see and it's all the more reason why mm -hmm. you should be supporting your local conventions and whenever there was a chance as in nobody was in line or anything if we could we went up to the celebrity guests and you know talked to their handlers hey would you like to do a little promo for missouri yep. comic con the one that we did not get that i would have loved to have got was Sean Astin. Yes. I mean, yeah. we were Hello. a little excited <laughs> to represent. We went with the Goonies theme shirts. Uh, never, never say a die. <laughs> so these were actually really cool. I've, I've always liked the pirate motif and everything. So these were the ones that we went to. These were our first pickups. Why do we like to go for the shirts first? Because sometimes the sizes get out of there and then we screwed. <laughs> yeah, even though there was not an overabundance of comics, I did flip through some Mm -hmm. And I added this back into my collection. This is the X-Men Survival Guide to the Mansion. Oh. It's a nice wire-bound look inside of the X-Mansion. It talks about their code of ethics. You've got some great artwork in here. You've got everything from the security. You got the floor plan and the blueprints. Because let's face it, there's some times when you're watching a show or reading a book and the way they kind of move around, you always want to know what's the layout of this place. So that's pretty cool that's in there. Something that I always thought was great was there's this one page that shows a look inside a couple of rooms. You have Jubilee's room here, which... It's kind of a mess. Yeah, exactly as you expect. And then Gambit's room down here. It's very shiny. <laughs> Why is it so shiny? <laughs> now, this was something that I used to have back in the day, so I was all too happy to add it back into the collection. Well, speaking of comic books... I got me a Spider-Gwen Pez dispenser because I didn't have this one yet. I was very happy to add this to my Pez collection, which I didn't mean to start doing, but it just kind of happened. When they make cool Pez, <laughs> I, I can know. resist. Which is funny because I don't like the candy at all. I was about to ask, what's your favorite flavor of Pez? <laughs> None. <laughs> Something that will make it into the uh, official count later on is this a Breath of the Wild air freshener. The booth that had these had so many there different... There were a lot of fun air fresheners. Yeah, and they were all pop culture related. Yes. 
So they were actually kind of pretty clever. I'm very curious to know what Breath of the Wild smells like. Mmm, smells like dubious food. <laughs> Plushy alert! Hey, you finally got a plushie! I did, I finally got like an actual a plushie, while. yes! So I get to add this one because now I, I think this is my third little star creature, so very excited about it. I still haven't found me a good Rainbow Bright yet. This is in pretty good shape, too. Really good shape for being an original. The face is just a little slightly dirty, but the hair is not even really matted. That hard plastic face is normally scuffed up. Especially the nose. The like nose these. is usually always rubbed off, so I was very excited to see this. And I got it for a great price. Speaking of a great price, I got these Street Fighter II strategy guides. Now, the interesting thing about this is right here on the front, it says number one of four, except there's number five of five? them. So it does say free bonus section, but I got the whole set. I actually talked to the guys, got them down to half the price that Ooh, they had marked on that's them. That's always better. And I was excited to, uh, I guess I'm not really adding them to the collection now, am I? Well, I picked me up some more Lego figures. What are you going to do with all of these Lego figures? Eventually I'm going to have my town set up and they're going to just be randomly all over the town. We got ourselves an Ellie and a Joel. Got me a... Um, Ben Riley, Spider Man. Got Conchu. Dr. Robotnik. This one is yours. Oh, I couldn't resist the Jinx character. I mean, she looks adorable, but that big Gatling gun. And then, because it was the day before Super Bowl, I had to get a Chiefs Lego minifig. And it's holding a trophy, so I just knew that it was going to catapult us to the win. And guess what? We won. So that's why they won. That's why the Chiefs won. A exactly. Lego mini <laughs> and because we spent a certain amount of money, I got to do a coin op machine and get me at a gumbo of Jamie Lannister. Mm, keep him away from his sister, though. I didn't get her. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> One last pickup from the comic area was this Who Framed Roger Rabbit? It's an official comics adaptation. I'm Honestly, fine. I was only looking at the cover. And I didn't know exactly what it was, but the way Jessica Rabbit was drawn, I thought, yeah, m it, maybe it actually is a comic book. Because sometimes you would have those books from back in the day. Yeah. It's a comic adaptation, but it would have screenshots from the movie with yeah. text. This one, though, it is a comic book. It's legit. I spun a wheel at the waifu booth, and I got me some uh, fun stickers. I'm surprised those are as safe for work as they are. Well, they were just cute. <laughs> one of the last things that we got was one of the first things that we pretty much knew we were coming home with. Yes. This lovely pixelated Moogle acrylic stand. This booth had so much fun stuff. It was hard to kind of narrow it down. Right? <laughs> it was more a matter of what are we narrowing it down to yes. versus are we getting anything at all? You love Moogles. I absolutely love Moogles. So... This was a no-brainer for me that I wanted this one. It was just, were we going to bring home any other ones? Yeah, we're going to have to keep an eye on her stuff. Uh, yes. Maybe add some she more She had things. some really good stuff. She had coasters. The only thing, and this is nothing against her, the only thing I didn't like about the coasters is they were acrylic coasters, which in my opinion is kind of pointless because you get water on it and it's just going to run off and then it's not going to do its thing. But every one of her coasters came with a stand so you could use it as a piece of art, which is a brilliant idea. That's clever. Yes, and then she had a bunch of these. And the other thing that I really liked is she had, not only did she have prints and some bags, but she had compact mirrors. You don't see that a lot in merchandise for people. And the only reason I didn't get one is just because I didn't like any of the the pictures on them. The designs that the she designs, had there. Yeah. You saw plenty of designs that you would love to have yes. on the mirror. Yes, and she said give her an email, and next time she's making an order, she might just put those on on there so that's what i'm gonna do because i would absolutely love a museum well the fun thing about stuff like that is it's fun it's nerdy but it's also that functional exactly, item. exactly. so it's not just something that i mean as much as i love this it's going to look great sitting on a shelf that's also all it's doing is sitting on mm -hmm. a shelf but a compact you'd be busting that thing out all the time people exactly. would see that oh that's so cute what is especially that especially when i have to signal help help me i'm trapped in a well please help me this was Missouri Comic Con's second year. Second year, yeah. The first year was super packed. This year was no different. They've grown to the point where they were utilizing other buildings. Which, which was amazing. Yes, that was a great yes. idea. Where they had the panel and the cosplay contest set up their first there was year. No room, no room to sit. You couldn't hear anything. 
it was just cramped and it just didn't work this year though those those rooms were a lot yes, better so i were, really like that they weren't in just kind of like a gymnasium style setting it was in an actual you know like kind of i wouldn't say boardroom but there was carpet on the floor on the walls it had speakers so it was very well had audio hooked up to it there was plenty of room for people to sit and spread out and you could see everything so it was it was brilliant it's perfect the only downside to that was those buildings weren't connected to no, the you didn't show have to floor itself go outside and across the street <laughs> right which i mean for us that's no big deal but i was kind of curious <laughs> some of those cosplayers it's like how did you get over here because wow <laughs> the fact that it seems like maybe they were listening to some of the feedback that they've got from their first mm -hmm. year and are trying to improve it that is so awesome it just means that this thing is going to have lots of good stuff to come lots more guests i'm sure Hopefully yep. some more great vendors with lots of stuff for us to bring home or, you know, just a little bit of stuff. Yep, for, I definitely for... look forward to next year seeing who's going to be there and what's going to be there. So let us know in the comments down below what you thought of any of this stuff here and especially what you thought of the event. Do you have anything like this in your area? You should be looking around. Make sure you support your local conventions yes. and everything. And let's get some more comic books back into Comic-Con <laughs> and more video games too. Bye, nerdlings. Bye, bye, nerdlings. It's a baby from Supernatural. The floor plans, the bloopers. The blo nice. Bloopers. Yes, the bloopers. Just so you know, this is a normal sized microphone, and I'm a giant. It's the EMF detector, so you have to take no. Nerd. There's more weapons in the back. Okay. Nope. <laughs> he took two eyes. I got bored. The whole thing is incredibly impressive. I don't even, I'm still doing like the, you know, like this, so I don't. I think it's only fair to ask, what's your favorite scary? Yeah. Uh, I'll be scream. <laughs> Pink microphone. It's so cute. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So, uh, no, sorry, not you. We are down here at what's Springfield. Springfield. Can you start it? Roll over your shoulder. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Mark Anthony with Waifu Wear. You can find us at waifuwear.com. We're currently at Mississippi Comic Con. Mississippi. Oh my, let me, let me redo that. And I won a. Um, crap. Not Tyrion Lannister. Jamie Lannister. Ready? We're, we're, small, we're, we're small potatoes here. I'm here in Springfield, Missouri, headquarters for Bass Pro Shops. And Johnny, I love your store. I was shopping there four hours yesterday. I needed more time. Mic check, Tom. Got a mic and I'm checking it. Mic check, Lacey. Mic check. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.